So this message is from Gigi on YouTube. And Gigi says, so what if I'm a new born again believer, but I don't belong to a church or know any Christians and I'm walking this path alone with Jesus? Am I condemned without water baptism? Well, Gigi, I appreciate this question. If it's okay, if I could grab this one, guys, is that all right? Yeah, please, please. Okay. Do. Awesome. Um, I really, um, I really resonated with this because I remember when I was first, you know, following Jesus, I, I wasn't initially, um, you know, I didn't initially attend church regularly. That wasn't something that I was doing at that time. But when I got to know Jesus, I wanted to know him and God led me to a really great church. And was it perfect? No, but the Lord was very clear in leading me there. And, um, church is definitely something that is beneficial for the most part. There's definitely, you know, there's always going to be um, issues in places, but um, the Bible is very clear that we, that we should um, try to find other believers to help encourage us in our walk with God. Now to, there's kind of two things I want to address in your, um, your comment question here, Gigi. The first one is, are you condemned if you're not baptized by water baptism? Well, I can see where you're, um, you might be coming to this conclusion um, from the book of John chapter three, um, you know, Jesus is speaking to Nicodemus and this is one of the most famous chapters of all the Bible because um, it contains John three sixteen, which is basically the, you know, the message of the gospel. But if you go a little bit further up in John chapter three, um, starting in verse five and, or let's start with verse three, actually. It says, Jesus answered and said to him, most assuredly, I say to you, which is Nicodemus, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And Nicodemus said to him, how can a man be born when he's old? Can he enter a second time to his mother's womb and be born? And verse five, Jesus answered, most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. And so Jesus basically says, don't marvel that I'm saying be born again. He's not saying, you know, we literally have to be born again, but yeah, it's a spiritual rebirth. Now, when it comes to water baptism, is that something we should do? Absolutely. It is important. It is a, an essential part of our conversion process. However, is it something that you have to do immediately right away after you've accepted Jesus? It might be something you need to take some time to do. Um, I can't help but think of, you know, when Jesus was on the cross and he had, you know, the thief on his right hand who had said, you know, Lord, you know, when you come in your kingdom, remember me. And Jesus says, assuredly, I tell you today, you will be with me in paradise. He, Jesus gave him assurance of salvation that day. He said, you will be in heaven one day. But did that thief ever get to be baptized in water? No. So how is it that you know, that thief had the assurance of salvation that that day he knew that he was right with God and that he, no matter what happened that day, whether he died or miraculously lived, um, he would be in heaven. Well, he had to accept Jesus by faith. And Jesus, when he began his ministry, we know um, he was baptized by his cousin, John the Baptist. And so Jesus, he didn't need a baptism of repentance or a baptism of cleansing, but Jesus did it to fulfill all righteousness. So basically, um, until you are baptized in the water, Jesus's baptism covers you in essence. Um, if, if that makes sense, Jesus's robe of righteousness, his perfect life that he lived, it covers you. Now, let's say you have opportunity to get baptized and you choose not to, and you know God is convicting you to do it, um, and you choose not to, is that going to keep you from heaven? In essence, it might because the um, he who knows to do good and doesn't do it that is sin unto him. So basically, if you don't have the opportunity to be baptized and you, you know, you want to be, but you just don't, it's, it hasn't lined up. Um, it hasn't, you know, come to fruition yet, but um, you're looking for the opportunity. I think, and, and you know, your heart's right with God. I would say, you know, you're fine. There's, you know, there's nothing wrong with your salvation with your walk with God. But if you know that you have opportunity to be baptized and you just refuse not to, and you, the Holy Spirit's convicting you, but you refuse, then that's sin. And you need to confess it to God, um, in order for you to be, you know, again, right with him for, for him to cleanse you and, and for you to be, um, 
ready for, you know, for, for heaven in essence, uh, because it is, um, we do have to do things by faith and baptism is part of that, um, part of our walk if we have opportunity to do so. So having said that, um, the other part of your question, uh, my friend is, you know, basically, um, is it wrong for you to not go to church? And for that, that's always a tricky thing. Um, you know, Jesus said, where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of them. And so it's a good thing for you to be, you know, with fellow believers in the book of Hebrews chapter 10, um, starting verse 22, um, it, Jesus, or Paul says something really beautiful about Jesus. He says, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Basically he's saying we should get baptized. Um, it's important. And he said, and let us hold fast the profession of our faith. Cause we can't just be baptized and be like, Oh, we're saved. Cause there's some people who believe that, Oh, I got baptized. I'm once saved, always saved. That is not biblical. By any means, <laughs> look in the book of Revelation 2 and 3. It says, I, you know, Jesus has talked about blotting out people who don't repent of their sins. Um, you, you have to not only be baptized, um, but you also have to hold fast to that profession of our faith without wavering, as it says in verse 23, for he is faithful, that promise. Jesus is faithful and he will guide you and lead you all the way to heaven. And so in verse four or 24, it says, and let us consider one another to provoke unto love and good works. So it's important to have other people around you who are believers because they provoke you to love and to good works. That is the purpose of being part of a family of God in a church body. And in verse 25, he says, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the matter of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. The closer we get to the second coming, the closer we get to Christ's return and to heaven, we need to be um, in the presence of fellow believers, encouraging each other because it's going to get hard. And to do this walk alone, it's it's definitely difficult. Um, you know, is it impossible? No, but there's definitely a blessing that God has intended in having fellow believers with you in this journey. And there's so many times that, you know, even amongst um, Christians that we, you know, we might think, oh, we have to go out and be missionaries and go preach the gospel to all the ends of the world to people who don't know. And that's a very important thing too, um, especially if you're called to do that, um, to go out and be a missionary to, you know, places that haven't heard the message of, of Jesus. But it's also important to um, encourage those, you know, within the faith to stay in the faith because that's a ministry in and of itself as well. And that's something that I know within my my walk with God, that's something I feel very called to um, to encourage fellow believers to, you know, to stay true to their to their God because it's very easy to fall away as, as we look into this world and, you know, um, like it says in Matthew 24, because sin abounds, the love of many shall wax cold. And we don't want the love of God to wax cold. We want to stay on fire for Jesus and um, continue in the faith that he's called us to. So I hope that um, helps you a little bit, Gigi, and encourages you to stay uh, close to God and to um, to not... Um, uh, to not fall away, but to stay in um, in harmony with Jesus, so that we can um, so we can be ready for the heavenly kingdom. But um, and if you're having a hard time finding a church body, or finding connections, um, be sure to reach out to us. We can see about maybe helping you find a good church in your area, and um, just encouraging you as you walk with God, because we love you too, and and you're our sister in. Um, we just pray for your blessing. Thank you.